In the last episode of What's That Bird, we looked at an app called BirdNet. BirdNet uses machine learning to help you identify birds in the field. You can use this app by downloading it from your smartphone's app store. Today, we're going to see just how good this app is by testing it against 10 common North American birds. I'm going to use recordings that I made in the field, some good and some not so good, and we'll see just how good BirdNet really is. For this test, I'm going to use the web interface of BirdNet because I already have all of my bird calls recorded, and the app cannot accept pre-recorded files. The first challenge for BirdNet is the Great Blue Heron. BirdNet, indeed, gives the most probable identification as the Great Blue Heron and assigns it a probability of 0.445. Let's record these results in a table. In this table, I also wrote down P1 over P2, where P2 is the probability of the second most likely result. P1 over P2 is one possible measure of the confidence of the first result. BirdNet is certainly not doing too badly. Let's go on to the second challenge, the Canada Goose. Again, BirdNet identifies the most likely guess as the Canada Goose. Surprise, surprise! and P1 is 1 this time. Interestingly, the second most likely guess is the cackling goose, which is a very similar species and has a very similar call. This shows that if you have two species which are very similar and have almost the same call, then you should also identify based on sight and not just sound. The third challenge is the house finch. Wow. BirdNet is knocking it out of the park, again, with a probability of 1 for the house finch. And this time, the second most likely guess, Cassin's finch, only had a probability of 0 0.001. And what about challenge number 4, the red-winged blackbird? Yes, the red-winged blackbird has a very distinctive call, so it is not surprising that it was chosen as the most likely guess with a probability of 1. Let's go on to challenge number five, the ring-billed gull. And yet again, the ring-billed gull was identified. The second most likely guess was the Mediterranean gull, but we can rule out the Mediterranean gull because that gull does not come to Ottawa. Challenge number six is the cedar waxwing, and this one might be more difficult due to the lower quality of the audio file. But yet again, BirdNet identifies our species as the cedar waxwing. The bohemian waxwing is the second guess but that only came in at a probability of 0.2. I find it quite impressive that a computer program can distinguish between these two species. Challenge number seven is the chipping sparrow. And this one might be too difficult for two reasons. Number one, there's a lot of background noise in this recording, not only of other sounds, but of other bird calls. And two, the chipping sparrow in this video does not make its characteristic call, but only a few chirps. And indeed, the results are not good this time with the first result being the golden-crowned kinglet. Actually, the golden-crowned kinglet might have been around somewhere. In fact, this is not a fair test for BirdNet, and this shows that you should use a relatively clean file when trying to identify a bird based on sound. Test number eight is the black-capped chickadee, which also has a very distinct call. Yes, it's not surprising that the first guess is indeed the right one. Interestingly, the second guess is human. Challenge number nine is the American crow. These birds were a little farther away, but their call still came out fairly clear. BirdNet tells me the correct answer yet again. The second possibility, the fish crow, was assigned a probability of 0 0.066. However, the fish crow can't be seen here either, so actually the probability is essentially zero. The final challenge is the common starling. Now, I expect this bird to be very easy to identify. Wait a minute, what's this? Audubon's Oriole? I've never even seen that bird. Now this is quite a surprise to me because we have footage of sound coming out of the beak of a starling, and yet this app can't even identify it. In fact, the common starling is not even among the options. I'm not sure, but I think the individual in this video is a juvenile, and I think this is the reason the app could not identify it because it was probably trained mostly on adult data. This just goes to show that you cannot just rely on an app to identify a bird. It can be a good starting point, but it is not a complete solution.
However, overall, I was very impressed by BirdNet's capabilities. Therefore, I do recommend this app as part of your bird watching toolkit. Thank you for watching and happy birding.